Hi everybody. Welcome back. This is Tracy from So Thankful. I hope you're excited and ready to sew um, the rest of our bag. The Stanza Zip Bag. We're making a custom size to turn it into a Wonder Clip pin cushion. All we have to do, so easy guys, take your zipper, pull it off, and that's it. One piece of your zipper tape, you're going to roughly center it on the short edge, on one of the short edges of your vinyl mesh. Or if you have the fabric version, um, you would do the same there. So go ahead and center that, and we're going to put it down under the needle and get that stitched on. So the great thing about using the By Annie's, um, the By Annie's zipper tape is the tape is a little bit wider and therefore I don't find the need to use a zipper foot. I just use my regular foot and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam here. Of course, we always start and end with the back stitch. Until you get used to sewing on the vinyl mesh, I just suggest you slow down. I don't have a special foot on here. This is just my standard foot and this is just a straight stitch machine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead there. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to take your vinyl mesh and finger press here. If you happen to have a clover roll and press, they can be handy. If you don't, it's fine. Just continue to finger press. But the roll and press works really nice on a hard surface to help flatten that edge out. You want to make sure that you're nice and flat there. Once you've got your edge nice and flat, you're going to go back and top stitch right on the very edge. As you can see, I've got my vinyl mesh. The folded edge of the seam allowance is running right along the inside of that toe of my foot. And we're gonna just stitch right across here. If you see any curling or it's pulling back, just use your fingers and straighten it out as you go. Excellent. Now we're going to repeat the same thing at the other end. So go ahead and do that and I'll be right back with you. Okay, once you have both ends of the zipper tape sewn on, you're going to go over to your cutting mat and you're going to line up. You want to take your vinyl mesh with the zipper tape and you're going to lay it so that it's zipper tape side down. Okay, so essentially inside out, you're going to bring it up so you have wrong side facing you on the zipper tape. And what we want to do is line up the sides of the bag. So make sure you have it exactly meeting. We want the zipper tape to be exactly the same length on both sides, on both edges. So once you've got that, you can just take your ruler and your rotary cutter and go ahead and cut that. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our zipper pull to the zipper tape. And it might seem tricky at first if you haven't done this, but with a little practice you can get it. And the by Annie's is a little bit easier because it's a little bit bigger, um, the zipper pull with the tape, and a little bit easier to manage. The sewing pattern that I have provided, it offers additional instructions if you're using the smaller tape um, for what you can do. So you're going to insert the first side into the rounded edge of your zipper. You're just going to get a little grip on it there. Grab your other edge, and just like you're doing your jacket, you're going to insert that until you feel it kind of catch. Sometimes it helps if you set it down on a firm surface, you can kind of feel that. Then what I do is I fold the one zipper tape around, I don't know if you can see that, so I kind of have it pinched between my fingers, and you hold on, 
and you just need to wiggle it a little. Go ahead and there you go. Give it a pull. Just don't zip off the other end. So as you can see, we've got our zipper on. Now, if you didn't get it straight and it's not even, we're gonna have to go back and do it all over again. So again, here we go. I'm gonna take the zipper, one edge, insert it here. You want it just to the bottom, to the flat edge of your zipper pull. You're gonna go ahead and insert the other side until you feel it grip. And you can use a flat surface to help you get that lined up. You'll kind of feel it click in there. Then bring it around, pinch it with your other fingers or with your, with your fingers so you've got a grasp on it there. Sometimes you can flip it around. There we go. Okay, and this time we're much better. That is, is much better now, it's much more even, and that's what we want. Okay, so you can see here um, where both sides of my vinyl mesh are lining up pretty straight there. If it's off just a little bit, it's not that critical of a deal. This is not a masterpiece that's gonna be entered in some contest. Um, this is for your desk or your sewing table or your area. And in the end, you're probably not gonna see a little bit. And as you make these, you're gonna get better. The more you practice, obviously, the more you get better. So just don't stress. Do your best, get the feel for it, practice, and enjoy the process. The next thing we wanna do we want to secure these ends so that we don't run that zipper pull right off the edge and then we have to start all over with getting that back on again. So what I like to do is I take it over to my sewing machine, make sure that this bottom edge is out of the way, kind of pull it up here, and we're going to just sew a line. It's going to be off the side. We're not sewing into the vinyl mesh at all. <clears throat> Move this over here so you can see it. That will help, right? Okay, get my needle down, and we're just going to do a couple passes back and forth off the edge. This is just to keep the zipper pull from coming off while we're working on the project. Okay, because this is a nylon uh, coil zipper, it's not going to bust your needle. I have no problem, I've been sewing these for years and really have no problems, never have busted a needle with that. So just relax on that. Now, this is exactly why you can't use <laughs> metal teeth because you could never do this with metal teeth in this technique. And repeat the same thing on the other side. I just hold both sides with my fingers to try to keep it, it closed. It just helps keep it a little bit more secure. And we're gonna go ahead and back space, or back space. Backstitch. There we go. All right. Now, this is what it should look like. Okay. For the next part, what we want to do first is decide um, which way do you want your zipper to go when your bag is finished. Do you want it to zip from this way to that way, or do you want it to zip? this way to that way. And everybody has their own preference. To me, I go both ways, it doesn't really matter. Um, whichever way you wanna go, you're just gonna need to pay attention to that for this next part because we're gonna flip it inside out. And if you're not paying attention, you could have it end up being the opposite of the way that you want. So for the next part, we need to make sure the zipper is open at least three inches. I like to go even a little bit more, it just makes it easier for turning. Um, the finished product. So go ahead and flip it inside out. In the pattern, um, I don't have you leaving the top side, uh, the folded edge, very deep. But when I make my wonder clip, uh, 
pincushion. I like to have that top edge be a little bit deeper. It just gives a little bit more to grab onto for my clips. So here's what I'm talking about with it inside out. You need to think about which side do you want that zipper to be pulling from. And so are you gonna go like this? Are you gonna go like this? If it matters to you which direction your zipper is pulling, pay attention here, okay? Because whatever side it is on here, you're gonna be flipped the other way. Again, there's really no right or wrong. It's just whatever your preference is. Now, I like to fold this down about an inch, like I was saying. Um, I like it a little bit deeper fold on top here. It just gives a little bit more real estate for my pins to grip or my my wonder clips to hold on to to anchor them and i just kind of eyeball it so once you've got that you're going to take a nice firm surface you can measure it if you want if you've got your uh, mat or a ruler close by you can measure to make sure that you're even on both sides you do want it to be relatively straight or your zipper is going to look kind of wonky in the end once it's nice and firm, I do like to take a wonder clip and just hold it there. That helps to, to keep it flat up here at the top. And then flatten your zipper pull on a nice firm surface. Make sure the sides of your bag are lining up. Everything's flat across the top. It looks like you're the same distance, the same measurement on each side at the top smooth it flat all the way down to the bottom get a nice crease and then you can take one or two wonder clips again to keep your fold once you've got this you're going to take it back to your machine and you're going to stitch down the side again we're going to use a quarter inch seam all the way down okay. in the pattern I discuss how we're going to finish the edge and I prefer to use a zigzag but this machine doesn't do zigzag and if yours doesn't doesn't mean you can't sew this project. All you need to do is run another line of straight stitching on the outside edge of the line that you just did. So that just gives it a little bit more security so that it's going to be a sturdier bag. But if you have the zigzag feature and it's easy enough for you to do to switch your machine over, or you have a second machine set up to do that, just go ahead and do that. Okay. Repeat this process on the other side. pull your clips off and see this is the nice part about the bag you can just um, drop your clips right into your your bag if it's sitting mine is sitting behind my sewing table that's where I was throwing them right into there that way they're collected in my bag and not all over my table and, and messing me up so now you're gonna go ahead and reach in the opening well you should go ahead and clip your seams your I'm sorry, seams, threads Clip your loose threads off first. And you 
you can also go ahead and take your scissors and clip off the ends of your zipper tape so that it matches the edge of your bag. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and prepare to make the boxed corners for our bag. And in, this is where the video is going to differ a little bit from the pattern. If you followed the pattern strictly, you would still get it to turn out okay, but I've discovered over the years of doing this, it works just a little bit better. If I go one, for this bag, we'll go one and a quarter inch. You're going to add a quarter inch to this measurement. So we're going to do one and a quarter this way. I'm going to mark that. So essentially you're going one inch from your quarter inch seam in there, and then you're going to go one inch from the bottom of the bag up. Okay. And you can use whatever marking utensil is good for you. You're going to do the same marking on the other side of your bag, and then we'll go back to the sewing machine. Okay, so now I have my boxes marked. You can see that. So it's one and a quarter inch from the edge to the inside or one inch from that quarter inch seam to the inside and then one inch from the bottom up. So you've got your rectangle. I guess it's not a square, it'd be a rectangle. You can see them marked. We're gonna go ahead and cut those. When you cut, you're gonna be very careful when you get to that corner edge because you don't wanna cut into what is going to be your seam allowance when you sew these together to form the boxed bottom. You just have to be very careful when you get to that corner. Set that aside. little bit more. Come on, baby. One more edge. Okay. There we go. So now, you can wiggle that zipper open just a little bit more. It makes it easier to get your hand in. You're going to take <clears throat> your bag bottom. You're going to notice how you have a folded edge here. Pay attention to that crease line. If it helps you to use a chalk line or put a pin there to really make it clearly marked for you, that's great. If not, you can eyeball it. And then you're gonna line it up with your seam from the side of the bag. When you get to that seam area, you're gonna push the seam towards the back, the not zipper side. So push the seam away from that. And then everything should line up. Let's see, let me get it right up there. Your sides should line up real nice. Everything should be nice and flat. And once you've got that, you're gonna go ahead and use your wonder clip and clip that. Then you can repeat that for the other side. Get everything lined up. You don't wanna to tug too much at that seam allowance from the side or it could pull apart. So we're just gonna line it up nice. Try to get everything nice and flat. And centered. And get a wonder clip. Then you're gonna go over to your machine. And we're gonna go ahead, and just press the bag down, quarter inch seam allowance again. Sure we have it lined up here. Sometimes it wants to get tricky with you and push apart. If that happens, just use your fingers and guide it back in. Make sure you're back stitching at beginning and end. It might seem like it's off center as you're going um, because you're you're folding, you're pushing that seam allowance toward the back edge. So it doesn't necessarily look like it's centered but it, it should be, you did it right. Sometimes, there we go. 
just tell it what to do. Be patient with yourself, be patient with it, and keep moving forward. And I like to back stitch a few times across here. Now, if you are using your zigzag machine, you can go ahead and um, finish that edge. Otherwise, I just lift my needle and do the same that I did along the side seam. Just go along that edge. You're just reinforcing that seam to make it a little extra sturdy. And keep in mind, this bag is not going to be, you're not out carrying buckets of water or things that are really heavy. This is going to sit on your desk. So it should not be receiving a whole ton of stress. Yes, you will pick up your bag when you go to travel or to put it in a carrying case or, or move it across your desk, but you're not going to be carrying heavy items in it long distances. So um, nothing to stress too much about. Repeat the same thing on the other side. Get it under your needle, quarter inch seam, back stitch. Coax it into position. Go back and forth a couple times. Trying to stay around that quarter inch line. Then you can lift your needle and move it over. And repeat on the outside edge. Now, let's see if I did it right. You can trim any long threads here if you want now, or you can wait and do it later, but it usually works better if you try to get most of them now. Okay, you're gonna reach inside your bag and go ahead and turn it out. If you have the point-to-point -point turner, now is a perfect time to use it. If you don't, if you have a chopstick, sometimes a butter knife can help for pushing out corners, um, especially along this top edge. I like to use my fingers first, but once I get it roughly turned, make sure there's no holes, you caught all the edges. Again, there we go. We're pretty well centered there, not too bad, not too bad. So we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna take my point to point turner, either end, whatever end feels like it works good for you. You just wanna gently push that out until you can see that your seam allowance is pushed all the way out in those box corners. Got no holes there, we're good. Other than the normal holes in the vinyl mesh. You can use your fingers here at the edge where the zipper is. <clears throat> finger press and gently pull it apart where the seam is using your fingers. You just kind of finger press, pushing that seam allowance toward the back away from the zipper. And then I go back in with the point-to-point -point turner. You gotta be careful because with the, the vinyl mesh, you can push the point through and you don't wanna do that and distort the edge. You just wanna give it a nice encouragement to give you a smooth edge. All along there. What happened there? There we go. Okay, now you should have a bag that looks like this. Okay. Yours look like that. It may not stand up exactly straight right now because we're going to do a couple more things. The weight of your zipper pull may tip it over. But remember, we're going to add Wonder Clips to the inside, and this next step will also help it. So, let me get that thread out of the way. Sometimes little threads will pop up, that's okay. Just clip them off. So what we're gonna do, the last step for stitching on this, back here at the sewing machine, 
I go in about a quarter inch or so from that edge. Um, and we're just gonna do a nice edge stitch across the top. It just gives it a little bit of anchoring, holding that top edge together and keeping things kind of straight. Do about a quarter inch seam. You can make it more narrow or less. It's up to you. Again, this is a slight variation from what the pattern, the written pattern offers. Either way is fine. It just depends on what you're using it for. When I initially developed the pattern, I wasn't making, I didn't even think about doing this as a wonder clip corral or pin cushion. So <clears throat> therefore the difference in the edge style. But it all works. You can make your own choices on what you like. As you can see, we've got a finished bag. Now all we need to do is throw some wonder clips in here. There you go. A wonder clip pin cushion, tool corral, perfect for the side of your desk, your sewing table, wherever you're working, you need to keep gadgets, small things, things at the ready and ready to go. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video.